I'm Alvin Taylor and this is my presentation on building your own computer. Now, when building your own computer, the first thing you have to think about is, first of all, your budget. How much are you willing to spend on all your parts for this computer? And second of all, what do you want your computer to do? Do you want it to be like a gaming or performance computer? Or do you just want it to be like an office computer? Now, to decide on a parts list for your computer, first you have to know the parts of a computer. So I'll describe those to you. First part, which I'll be using my computer as an example. This is my computer, which I built. First part is the motherboard. Now, if you can see this darker color back here behind everything else, that is the motherboard. It's like the central piece of the part of the computer. Everything plugs into that. Like, it's basically the main junction, sort of. Second part of the computer is the processor. Now, the processor is the central processing unit of a computer. All the data goes into the processor and it kind of decides what should be done with it. And you can't actually see the processor because it's underneath this fan. So the fan's for just for cooling because it gets really hot while it's running and otherwise it would overheat. Next part I'm going to be discussing is the hard drive. The hard drive is the long-term long-term storage device on a computer and it there's two types of hard drives. There's a mechanical hard drive and a solid state this hard drive is a mechanical hard drive. The difference is a mechanical has a disk and the solid state does not. It uses, elec it's electric, use, does not use a disk or any moving parts. Now the advantages of having a mechanical or a solid state is a mechanical is slower but it lasts a lot longer and can store a lot more data. A solid state cannot store as much data and doesn't last very long, um, but you, it goes much faster. All right, next part. Next part is the power supply. The power supply is what's actually going to plug into the wall that's going to supply power and route power all over the computer. You can see how all these wires go up through and connect to things like the motherboard and this PCI card, which we'll talk about later, and the hard drive over here. Alright, next part. Next part is the optical drive. The optical drive is like a disk drive for like DVDs and CDs. Now, I just have a DVD one, but there's also Blu-ray optical drives. I did not get one because I'm not into movies or anything like that. Okay, so next part. Next part is the RAM or random access memory. That's kind of the short-term memory of a computer. It's where data is stored. Like, say you have like a some picture or something up on your screen. That's just going to be RAM. RAM's just general. And the more of it you have, usually the faster your computer is going to be. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is a lot. Usually you don't need that much. But this is a gaming and performance computer, so I went for a lot more. All right, next thing. Next thing is your PCI cards. The PCI cards are like a kind of a preference, just something you can choose these if you'd like. They make things work better like this is a graphics PCI card and that's particularly very powerful. What it's for is it'll help like for gaming it'll make it look better and run smoother. So I have one of these because this is again a gaming and performance computer. The, these two are wireless cards. One's just normal one. The other one I got f to be Mac compatible. I'll tell you why I did that later. All right. Next part is the case. Everything goes in the case. You can see basically take all the other parts I mentioned out and that's the case. And this part here is not like a usual part in a computer. That's just so you can put hard drives in and take them back out. This here is for removable hard drives. It's just an extra thing I put in so I could didn't have to open it all up, take this hard drive out. I could just slip one in here instead. All right, next thing is creating a parts list. 
Once you, now that you know the parts of a computer, you can go on to creating a parts list. Now when you're creating a parts list, you gotta keep in mind first your budget, how much money you're willing to spend, and what kind of computer you're wanting to build. So that's just gonna vary, it all depends. But also a big thing with creating a parts list is compatibility. Like when you're picking out a motherboard, you have to make sure it has the correct socket to go with your CPU, which is the computer processing unit, like I mentioned before, the processor. And that the socket is represented by a number, and that will also be on both the motherboard and the processor will have that socket name. All right, next thing. Next thing when you're deciding on your parts list is your hard drive. Your hard drive, you it depends, like, do you want it to go fast but not have that much memory? Or do you want to have a lot of storage but maybe you don't really care about it running as fast? I have a lot of storage in this hard drive, but and it doesn't run very fast, but that's okay because I have a whole bunch of other fast parts to help speed up the situation. Alright, next thing. After you've decided on your whole parts list, you've looked at the things for compatibility, like everything will come with an instruction booklet. So you can look through that and make sure everything's going to fit, and like you can make sure your power supply, like this has 650 watts, that's what the W stand for, stands for, so I had to make sure that that was going to have enough, but not too much power to go to all the other parts in the computer. Alright, so the next thing you go on to is assembly. After you've gotten all your parts, you're ready to start building it. So, when you assemble a computer, you've got to make sure, first of all, don't force anything. When you force things, st stuff just gets broken. And you might have noticed I have my hand on the top of a computer the whole time I'm pointing at parts. That's because it keeps me grounded, so I do not zap any of these boards or anything with circuit, with uh, zap any of the circuits with static electricity. Because even a small amount that maybe you don't even notice can harm or ruin parts. So after you assembled your computer, you need to install software. Now usually you're going, well basically all, every, you're going to be installing Windows because Windows is much more flexible. Now I've done something with this, uh, they, call, they call creating it a Hackintosh. That means putting Mac on something that's Windows based. And I'm still working on this because Mac does not fully work. That's why I have the Mac compatible wireless card is so that I can run that. And to, in order to do that, you have to have special bootloaders after you start up. Because when you start up your computer, what's going on behind the scenes is what they call BIOS, which is the basic operating initial software. And that is used by Windows. And you can all actually access that on most computers, on, and you can on this one. And you can change settings about your computer. But Mac doesn't use that, it uses Effie, which this computer does have Effie on it, which that made it easier when I was working on Hackintoshing it. Alright, so you've got your computer, you've got all the software installed, time to just, you got your thing. So, any questions on that? A motherboard? Well, you're going to spend most time choosing that, but what you want to look for is first of all the CPU socket that's going to match up, and maybe the p amount of PCI and PCI Express sockets that are in it. The difference between PCI and PCI Express is PCI Express is just different size, works differently. Like this runs on a PCI Express, these are just PCI, so. There's the difference. And also you're going to want to look at the chipset, which is this piece right here, this little blue piece that has the ASUS, which is the brand of the motherboard, on it. And the better quality that will also help your computer go faster. Um, well, I play Minecraft, which, yeah. 
Um, and I'm thinking about getting Portal for the computer. I can get that game too. So I don't have very many games on it yet, but. Any other questions? Oh yes, um, this computer, the entire thing cost $1,200, which sounds like a lot of money, but the amount of computer I got out of that was far more than what you would get if you bought something like this retail. What's that? Well, not very long because I had looked up on the internet before I started building the basic kind of where everything would be, I don't know, organization I should say. And all the things came with instruction booklets, so that made it pretty easy. I bought all these parts at a store called Micro Center. I'm trying to remember. I think it was in Sioux City. I don't quite remember where I got it. I could be wrong on that. But it was a store called Micro Center, and that is a chain of stores. And I bought all my parts there, and they helped me with the parts list, too. Why did I want to build a computer? Well, I would save a lot of... I wanted a computer, my own computer, and I knew I'd save a lot of money if I built one and I'd get a much better computer out of it. I got the original idea from my cousin who told me about building a computer and how it had a lot of advantages. Any other questions? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Probably the processor. Even though it's a good processor, it can still be better. And they just came out with new ones. What's that? Um, oh, like building one? My age, 12. I started this almost not that long ago, almost a year ago now. Well, it's, it's, I don't know if you consider that long or not, but... Any other questions? Um, that's a good question. I don't know exactly how much it would cost. That's really hard to say. But I'd say probably at least double what I spent for it. Any other questions? Alright, thank you and that will conclude my presentation.